What's going on everybody? This is Jason. Welcome back to the basement. Um, today I am trying out something new. I got a little background block here. So normally I'm in the basement and you see all the stuff in the background, whether I got the lights on or not. But right now I got this uh, background kind of covering it, giving me that black silhouette. Uh, I got a green hoodie on and, um, and a glass of water, right? So for reference, I'm shooting with the Fujifilm XS10 with the 16 millimeter 2.8 at f4 and the Rode Video Micro um, for audio. So what I wanna what do I want to talk about today is a new is um, a camera that I've already talked about, but I want to give kind of an update on, and then also a new bag that I got. Well, actually a couple of bags. So I've been shopping. I've been shopping. I've been spending some money. So. Um, First, let's revisit this old beauty right here, the Fujifilm X F10, not the XS10, which I'm shooting on, which is the, you know, interchangeable APS-C with the big, nice grip, beautiful camera, the XF10 point and shoot, old school camera. Um, so I've been shooting with this a lot more lately because I always had an affinity for small pocket cameras because of the portability and having it with you. And I know in today's market, you're, most people are probably not even thinking about cameras, cameras like this or compact cameras because um, you know we have smartphones in our pockets all the time. So why do we need it? But to me, the shooting experience matters and also the ability to shoot with a better sensor and the ability to shoot raw with more physical controls to me is the allure of a camera like this because I'm able to, you know, most of the time I'm shooting this for casual purposes like family events and, you know, just documenting, you know, being out and about restaurants and stuff like that. Um, but I'd often turn those into, you know, like a blog post on my website or, you know, submit to, you know, stock photography, which I'm really not all that deep into. Just really getting started but you know smartphone photos don't really have that bandwidth to be using stock photography because the files are too small or they're too grainy or you don't have the ability to edit them because you didn't shoot raw like for me I don't shoot raw on my Samsung Note 10 so there's no opportunity to you know to, you know take a photo that may not be the greatest and turn it into a better photo so a camera like this has always been something I've had in the past, I would have the Canon G7X Mark II, which was kind of something I've had for a long time. And I had the G5X, so I've always had the Canon one-inch sensor versions. Um, so that's kind of been kind of the best of both worlds because it had, you know, a zoom on it. The, the sensor was, you know, big enough. You had raw control, so you had that, you know, ability to shoot. But I wanted to stay kind of in the Fuji ecosystem. So, you know, I moved on from that and I also broke it. I glued the uh, <laughs> the exposure comp dial into the camera, so I had to sell it for nothing, basically, because I messed up Gorilla Glue and something back together and missed the spot. It was a disaster, so. Uh, but I did like that camera. But um, I, I like the shooting experience of a camera like this better because I am a prime shooter, and this has a fixed 18 miller, 18 millimeter lens to give you that 28 millimeter equivalent, which I'm good with. I like that focal length. And um, just the size, the fact that the lens doesn't, you know, doesn't really protrude much at all, right? It just kind of stays the way it is. Um, you know, there's no like, you know, when you turn the camera on a lot of times, especially the ones with zoom, they kind of go, you know, extend out. But this doesn't do that. So it keeps a very flush profile. And um, that could be, you know, very easy because sometimes I wear this kind of little waist bag um, that I put on my belt. And this kind of becomes my sidearm. I always have a sidearm camera. Um, but nowadays I'm debating with this user experience. The autofocus is just a problem, right? It, in good light and in good contrasty situations, it's not bad. You're going to get your shot. It's going to focus. It's not going to hunt. And this camera is known for hunting. So you're not going to be in a bad spot there. But when it gets lower light and harder, con you know, very hard contrast times where there's one, you know, not too many color differences and texture differences, 
you know, it does that hunting and sometimes they can miss the shot. And I've never, in my photography career at this point, I've never experienced the camera doing that. Um, even the worst of cameras in, in the past that are old DSLRs, they've never been that bad, you know? So this is really my only experience with it. So I say all that to say that my last experience shooting with it, I actually turned the manual focus on and I just manually focus. So the trick to that is I pre-focus first, knowing that I wanted to be in this scene. So, I had to... so the trick I've been doing with this is that I've been taking the camera, putting it into manual focus. Uh, but before I put it into manual focus, I pre-focus a shot into an area that I want to be in and then put it into manual focus and really kind of gauge the distance you know, because there's a scale. So when you put some, when you put a Fuji camera in manual focus, there's always going to be a scale at the bottom, and you can gauge the distance. So say you're five to seven feet away, you can kind of gauge how far, depending on your depth of field and the scale, how much in focus you're going to be, right? And then also you got the focus peaking, so that helps you in most situations. I find that there's been harder to see times. Depending on what colors are in the room, it's harder to see it, um, you know, so keep that in mind as well. But I try to use the scale to kind of like gauge, all right, am I two feet away? Like I'm really close to something. Am I seven to 10 feet away? Or is it really far and I just go to infinity? And I've been using that as a kind of a workaround for the XF10. Um, so it's generally, obviously, when you go to manual focus, there's no restriction on the autofocus. So there's no hunting. So you get, you know, whatever you see, you just press the shutter and take the shot. So that's kind of been my workaround for that. So, um, you know, it seems to work. And I think, you know, some would say, why don't you just use snap focus? But the thing is, snap focus is good when you're outdoors in great light because you're going to get those specific F stops with the Fuji system, right? So you get, I think, the two meter snap focus is 5.6 and then the other one which I, I don't even use this so i can't tell you but i know when i did use it it was about depth of field it wasn't about actually manually focusing into the area you're going to be in like the meters matter but then the depth of field matters but this is all done when you're outdoors in good light the situation i used it in was actually indoors in low light so that's where the reverse happens where i need to be at 2.8 and so that focusing is going to be more critical to this distance than it is the depth of field. So that's my trick for it. Um, so that's that. So other than that, I think the XF10 is a great camera, but for me, the verdict is still out on this, whether I'm going to keep it or not. Um, I'm really debating at this point, are smartphones just more convenient? And, and at the same time, could I get away with like i know i'm not going to be able to shoot you know professional things with the phone and be able to submit that stock work and do you know other things with it but for personal purposes where it's family things like that um i could get away with probably getting some you know i have constant lights for video so if i'm shooting in low light and i'm shooting say food like you know my food at a restaurant and i want to document that i could just pull out a little pocket ring light or a little small led light give myself some light, take the shot with my phone. So I'm, I'm debating whether I should just, you know, kind of go that route for that purpose. And then when I really want to shoot professionally, just grab myself a bag, Hex Ranger Mini Sling, and then throw the XC3 with the 23 millimeter F2. And that'll solve my problem for my small camera's needs. Um, no, there's no hunting. Autofocus with this combination is stellar and excellent, in my opinion. There's no hunting, not even close to the failure that the XF10 is. So this, you know, is is my next step up, and I already have it. So remains to be seen if the XF10 is going to last. So stay tuned.